On the morning of October 7th, Israel awoke to a shocking attack by Hamas. In the past few days, the world has witnessed the most significant escalation of the Israel-Palestine war since the 1973 Yom Kippur War. As of October 10th, thousands of civilians and combatants on both sides have already been confirmed dead, and the death toll will undoubtedly only rise. Due to the gravity of unfolding events and the sheer scale of violence, this is already much bigger than another short-term burst of confrontation. It is yet another full-scale war between Israel and Palestine, which has the potential to alter the geopolitical situation in the Middle East. Welcome to our video about the war between Israel and Hamas, where we describe the situation on the ground and look at what can happen next. This video is made possible thanks to the generous support of our YouTube members and patrons. Their contributions are the backbone of our work. As a token of our appreciation, our patrons and YouTube members enjoy two exclusive videos every week. Currently, they have access to a complete series on Xenophon's Anabasis, the First Punic War, History of Prussia, Italian Unification Wars, Risorgimento, and numerous other fun videos. Additionally, our Pacific War series is ongoing, and we're excited to announce the release of a new series on the Russo-Japanese War and Albigensian Crusades, and much more, exclusively for our backers. If you want to join this fantastic community, you can find the links in the video description and pinned comment. By becoming a patron or YouTube member, you'll gain access to exclusive videos, early access to all our public content, release schedules, wallpapers, and an invitation to our active Discord server, where we engage in lively discussions. Your support is invaluable, and we sincerely thank you for making our work possible. At around 6.30am local time in Israel, Hamas, formerly known as the Islamic Resistance Movement, currently governing over the Gaza Strip, launched a massive barrage of some 5,000 rockets on Israeli cities to start its Operation Al-Aqsa Flood. Simultaneously, they destroyed Israeli observation towers and weapon systems on the border by launching drones modified to carry explosives. This enabled Hamas militants to use paragliders to fly over the border and enter Israel. The breach of the Israeli border fence was complete when other Hamas members blew holes in the fence moments later using explosives. Hundreds of militants entered southern Israel on motorbikes and cars. Hamas also conducted an amphibious landing near Zikim. On October 10th, the Israeli military claimed that roughly 1,500 Hamas fighters were killed during the incursion into Israel, which shows the scale of the incursion. The head of the military wing of Hamas, Mohammed Daif, stated on the first day of the attack that it was in response to the Israeli occupation, the desecration of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and the killing of Palestinians. However, there is an opinion that the motivation behind the Hamas attack was to shock the Israeli public and show that the Palestinian issue has not been resolved. Another motivation was to dissuade Arab countries like Saudi Arabia from signing normalization agreements with Israel. The Israeli government and the army were caught completely unprepared. It is very difficult to understand how the Mossad intelligence agency had missed preparations for an operation of such magnitude, although Gaza is under uninterrupted surveillance by Israel. Egyptian officials had reportedly warned the Israeli government about the preparations of Hamas for something big, but since the information was not concrete, it was ignored, and according to the Israeli government, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was not informed about it. The Israelis were expecting trouble in the West Bank due to the recent wave of violence and concentrated most of its standing army there, leaving the Gaza border practically undefended. Numerous media reports quoting sources from Israel claimed that they simply did not expect any escalation from Gaza. Merely 10 days before the start of this war, Israel reached an agreement with Hamas through intermediaries, reopening the border crossing and allowing Gazan laborers to work in Israel. On the first day of the hostilities, Hamas militants breached the border fence in seven different locations to infiltrate more than 20 Israeli border villages and cities. At 10 am, the Israeli military reported that Hamas had penetrated several military installations, the Erez border crossing base, the Zikim military base, the Nahal Oz military base, and the headquarters of the Gaza division. Militants captured Israeli tanks, armored vehicles, and other types of equipment. Hamas also took over the police station in Sterot. The Israeli military was caught entirely off guard and did not have nearly enough soldiers to repel the Hamas attacks. This left civilians in many Israeli localities and communities practically defenseless against the terrorist attacks of Hamas. 
Hundreds of civilians, including children, were killed indiscriminately in Sterot, Ashkelong, Neoz, Be'eri, Kfar Aza, Natif Ha'asara, Ofakim, and other areas near the Gaza Strip. At least 260 participants of a music festival near Reim were massacred. Hamas roamed the streets, shooting civilians outdoors or in their homes. They burned houses, wreaked havoc, and terrorized the people, until the Israeli soldiers arrived to fight them back. As of October 13th, over 1,000 Israeli civilians were killed and more than 3,000 were wounded. According to Hamas, some 150 Israelis and foreigners have been taken hostage in this attack. In these attacks, some Hamas militants reached as far as 24 kilometers from the border, and that shook Israeli society to its foundation. The full extent of the massacre of civilians Hamas perpetrated is unknown. A few hours after the start of the Hamas attack, the Israeli government started to act. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu declared that Israel was now at war, started by Hamas. Israeli civilians near the Gaza Strip were evacuated. The mobilization of 300,000 reservists was ordered, as the standing army units were sent to expel Hamas militants from the infiltrated areas. The Israel Defense Force, the IDF, reported the launch of Operation Iron Swords, aiming to eradicate Hamas and other radical groups in Gaza. Israel's security cabinet declared the adoption of a series of operational decisions aimed at bringing about the destruction of the military and governmental capabilities of Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. The Israeli government decided to cut the supply of electricity, fuel, water and goods to Gaza. By late October 8th, the IDF retook control of all areas infiltrated by Hamas, although they did not rule out that some militants might still be present near the border areas. It is clear from the statements of Netanyahu, his government and the Israeli military that their intention is to completely wipe out Hamas and eliminate any threat coming from Gaza. Netanyahu has called Gaza the city of evil and promised to turn all the places Hamas is hiding in and operating from into a ruin. He recommended residents of Gaza to leave now. Gaza has been under blockade by Israel and Egypt for more than a decade, and Cairo has stated it is going to allow 2,000 refugees per day, which is a paltry number considering Gaza's 2 million population. The Israeli defense minister has called Hamas militants human animals and told his soldiers in a broadcast that he was lifting any restrictions on their actions in Gaza. The IDF spokesperson Daniel Hagari has stated that the emphasis of the Israeli shelling of Gaza is on damage and not accuracy. The statements of the Israeli officials clearly demonstrate that they intend to retaliate against Hamas in the most forceful of ways, which could exacerbate the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has acknowledged Israel's legitimate security concerns, but also urged them to conduct military operations in strict accordance with the international humanitarian law. As of October 14, Israel has not started the ground offensive on Gaza, but it seems inevitable. For now, the Israeli military has been pounding the Gaza Strip heavily and regularly causing massive destruction. The Palestinian Ministry of Health claimed that 1,600 Palestinians, including 600 children, have been killed by Israeli shelling and airstrikes, and residential buildings, a hospital, and other civilian facilities have been destroyed. Several Hamas leaders have been reportedly killed in the airstrikes so far. The Hamas representative Abu Abaydah vowed to respond with the execution of a hostage every time an airstrike hits Gaza. So far, this has not dissuaded Israel from shelling Gaza. The words of the Israeli officials indicate that the shelling will continue until they deem conditions sufficient for a ground assault. Hamas has also been regularly launching rocket barrages on Israeli cities. Civilian areas in Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, Ashkelon, Herzliya and many other localities have been targeted. The Israel air defense system, Iron Dome, specifically designed to counter short-range missiles, has so far been largely successful in dealing with Hamas shelling. But the sheer number of rockets launched on Israel makes it practically impossible to destroy all Hamas rockets, which have resulted in casualties among Israeli civilians. Israel looks determined to retaliate against Hamas as strongly as possible. The ground assault on besieged Gaza looks like a matter of time, as Israel keeps rolling its tanks closer to the war zone. Israeli officials have warned the public to prepare for a long war, 
as the complete distraction of Hamas and other militant groups in Gaza would be a grueling and costly task. Hamas has a network of underground tunnels that it can utilize to survive the Israeli airstrikes, along with inflicting as much damage as possible on the IDF. Any long war has the potential to escalate beyond the borders of the battlefield and spill over to other countries. Netanyahu has claimed that Israel's response to an attack from Gaza will change the Middle East, without elaborating on what exactly that meant. The United States has expressed its unequivocal support to Israel, promising military aid and ordering the newest USS Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier and the Ford Carrier Strike Group to sail to the shores of Israel, with another carrier group rumored to be joining it soon. US President Biden has strongly warned against any third parties joining the war against Israel. To any country, any organization, anyone thinking of taking advantage of the situation, I have one word, don't. Biden most probably means Iran, or Iran-backed Hezbollah operating from Lebanon. So far, both parties have offered their complete support to Hamas, but do not appear likely to directly join the war, at least in the short term. Both Israel and the United States have downplayed the claims of Iranian orchestration behind the Hamas attack. Nobody doubts that Hamas is backed and sponsored by Tehran, but so far, the official statements indicate that there is no evidence to prove the direct and hands-on participation of Iran in the attack on Israel. Still, Iran's supreme religious leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, has warned Israel that attacking Gaza will bring a greater calamity to Israel. Iran will be happy to draw Israel into a prolonged war without having to directly take part in it. But this does not rule out using its proxies, like Hezbollah, to create a second front for Israel at some point. So far, Hezbollah has been careful, and apart from several artillery and rocket exchanges, the northern front has been quiet for Israel. Hezbollah's direct involvement in the form of a ground assault against Israel may lead to heavy retaliation not only against Hezbollah, but possibly against Iran as well. Such a scenario would be a major escalation of the war in the Middle East, potentially leading to an incredibly risky situation. Thus, Hezbollah's attack against Israel does not seem imminent at this point, which does not mean that it won't happen, particularly if the war is long indeed. Hezbollah is much bigger and more powerful than Hamas, it has tens of thousands of militants in its ranks, along with thousands of rockets, and a certain reputation for managing to keep the IDF at bay in the 2006 Lebanon War. Therefore, Israel will keep a large contingent of its army on the border with Lebanon to be ready for any incursions from Hezbollah. The sides have exchanged fire since the start of the war, and there were additional claims that Israeli positions in the occupied Golan Heights were under fire too, so it is a good idea to keep looking for developments on this front. We are still in the first days of the war, started by an unexpected and devastating attack by Hamas on Israel and its civilians. This is the biggest escalation of the Israel-Palestine conflict since the 1973 Yom Kippur War. There have been more than 5,000 civilian and military casualties already on both sides. Both Israel and Hamas are bracing for a long war, which has the potential to draw in other countries and reshape the geopolitical situation in the Middle East. More episodes on this topic are on the way, as we collect more information as we go, so make sure you have subscribed and pressed the bell button. Recently, we've started releasing weekly patron and YouTube member exclusive videos. Join the ranks of patrons and YouTube members via the link in the description or by pressing the button under the video to watch these weekly videos, learn about our schedule, get early access to our videos, join our private Discord, and much more. Please consider liking, commenting, and sharing, it helps immensely. This is the Kings and Generals channel, and we will catch you on the next one.